worship you in the beauty of holiness. We say thank you. Thank you. We want to bless your name, O oh God, for you alone are worthy. Yes, Lord. Worthy is the land that was slain in order that we may have life and have it in abundance. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. I ask that you take preeminence this hour, yes. that I decrease, and you be the one who will speak through me. Amen. I pray, Father, that you will create, O oh God, hearts that are willing to receive your word in order that we may have an impact in the world out there. I want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. You take preeminence and let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A commitment to the vision. When, when, um, when God called Moses, after he had struck down the, 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 the Egyptian who was beaten, the, 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 the Hebrew slave, and he struck and killed him, he thought he did a good thing. Okay? But it was not welcomed by his brethren who saw him as a prince in the royal household. All right? And so he had to flee for his life when it was brought to Pharaoh that he had killed an uh, 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 Egyptian. And so he fled to the mountains where he met with his uh, father-in-law Jethro and the priest of Midian. And he began to wash over his sheep. While carrying the sheep back and forth, back and forth to graze, one day he came upon this site. I believe this site was always there. Of the burning, the, the fire was there, but the bush was not being burned. But this day I believe he opened his eyes, and that's why he saw the burning bush. Amen? We say the burning bush, but the bush was not burning. That was the marvel. There was a fire, but the bush was not burning. And God instructed Moses to go to Pharaoh. And tell him to release his people so that they can be able to come and worship him in the mountains. Amen. Amen. And so God gave Moses a mandate. <coughs> if you please turn with me to my first scripture, my technicians. On the Exodus 3, 1 to 4. One, uh, 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 chapter 3, verses 1 to 4 read thus. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. And I already said that quickly. Jethro was the priest of Eden, and he led the flock up to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Amen. 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 It was a marvel. God didn't call Moses until Moses turned. Amen. 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 That's how many of us are in this house today. We see, but we don't see. We hear, but we don't hear. Why? Because you can hear a sound, but unless you're listening, you will not be able to distinguish what is being said in what you heard. Amen? Amen. There is hearing and there is listening. You hear me? All of y'all hear me, right? Mm -hmm. But there are, there are people here who will take something out of what I'm saying today. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they decide to listen and take out of what I'm saying what they feel will help them in their journey. Amen? Amen? And so, Moses decided to turn aside from carrying the sheep where he normally carried them to grace and to go and see why this bush was being, you know, there was fire, but yet and still it was not burning. There was fire, but it was not burning. Based on this, God saw that Moses was interested in what he showed him. Mm -hmm. That's when God knew that the purpose for which he had called Abraham, from his father's and mother's land, and said, I will send you to a land where your people do not know you, where your people did not come from. But when, when, when man came in and did what he wanted to do, it kind of brought God's vision to a stagnancy. Mm -hmm. But here Moses was, and God knew that the vision had not yet died. Amen? Amen. God turned around and called his name. God knew who Moses was. Amen? God protected Moses while he was still in the womb of his mother. Yes. Amen? Amen. God took Moses from amongst the children that have been slaughtered and took him into the house of his enemy. Mm. Mm. How marvelous is that? Mm. God took you from, from 
a place of nowhere. The person that wants to destroy you, God brings you into this person's bosom and say, lie down on that bosom. Mm. Because as long as you are here, they will not be able to harm you. Because I have entrusted you to Pharaoh. Amen? Amen. And not put it to Pharaoh. But he gives it to the daughter of Pharaoh who had no other children according to the word of God. So she ducked up on this young child. She loved him. And he was brought up with the best trainers. He was taught by the best teachers. He was on equal par with the prince of Egypt. Amen. Amen. Even Pharaoh loved Moses even more than he loved his own son. Mm. Yes. Amen. Yes. Moses was in line for the throne of Pharaoh. Mm. But that was not God's plan for Moses. Mm. Moses saw the, 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 the Hebrew slaves. Nobody told him who he was. But there was something in him that told him, though I am in the household of Pharaoh, I am not of household of, of Pharaoh's bloodline. Yes. There's another blood that runs through my veins. Mm. There's another blood that runs through our veins. Yes. Because why? God predestinated us. Mm. Before the foundation of the earth was laid. Amen. Amen. He predestinated us because he knew that he loved us. Mm. And because he knew that the arch rival was going to come mm. and try to bring a division between us and God. So God laid a plan and that was the bridge Christ Jesus. Amen. So when Satan came in the garden and came about and led Eve away and she in turn led Adam away. That fellowship, you know, God is so good. There's confirmation in everything that we do once we are doing it in accordance to God's will. Amen. This morning when Bishop was teaching he said something. He said just because you have sinned, does that mean God has taken away his salvation from you? No. Your salvation is still there, but the fellowship is what is lost. My name is Lapu Masekwe Hunter. Though I am not married, I'm always going to be known as a massacre. Amen? Amen. Do you have made God angry somewhere along the line? We have fallen out of grace with him. We are still God's children. Amen? Amen. Amen. He never stopped loving us. Amen. He did not take away his Holy Spirit from us. Amen. It is the fellowship that he desires to have with us that we must endeavor to bring back alive. Amen? Amen. There are some people that came in here this morning and they're like, why am I praying? God doesn't hear me anymore. I laid in a bed of iniquity, so God doesn't have fellowship with me anymore. But I want you to know that you can reaffirm your commitment. Reaffirm your commitment. Do not sit idle. Do not become stagnant. Do not listen to the voice of, 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 the, of the enemy in your ear that makes you feel like you are of no consequence. That your life does not matter. It does matter. It matters. If it did not matter, God would not have sent his only begotten son upon that cross to come and die. Amen. 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 There's somebody in here that's like, okay, so she said, I want to have fellowship with God. How can I get a fellowship? Reaffirm your commitment. Amen. Reaffirm your commitment. Amen. Father, I've sinned. Like the prodigal son. He left. He left everything and went with what he took from his father. And the Bible says he squandered it. Foolishly, he joined himself to the point where he came down where he was asking to eat the scrap that they were feeding the pigs. How possible is that? A prince eating the scrap. To show you that he had come to a place where he was in complete destitution. What Jewish man can eat pig food? What Jewish man can eat pork? None that I know of. Amen? Amen? But this is where he came. Until he saw the light and said, My name is my name, and I carry the blood of my father in my vein. All I got to do is to go back to my father's house and tell him, I have sinned against you. Here I am. I have sinned against heaven and earth. Here I am. I want to reconnect to you. I want to come back to the love, the fellowship that you and I had. I want to come back 
come to that place. Amen. In all the way you are struggling, what are emotion? Amen. A father has been waiting for him all these years. Amen. Our father is waiting for us. Amen. God is waiting for us. Amen. You may have fallen from grace. God has not forgotten you. Amen. He said he has been praying for you. He's been praying and hoping that you will come to that place where you will recognize who you are. Amen. That you have been placed in a position of authority. Amen. That you are a princess. Amen. That you are a prince. Amen. That you have been intertwined with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That you have, you have inherited all the possession that Christ Jesus owns. Why? Because from the foundation of the earth, God made it so. Amen. Amen. There is nothing about us God does not know. Amen. Only thing we must do is to reaffirm our commitment to the vision that God got for us. Amen. 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 Reconfirm. Reconfirm yourself to Him. Don't, 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 don't get to that place where you say, you know what? There's no hope. There's no hope. There is hope. Amen. When Moses turned aside. And look at that bush. God knew there was hope for mankind. God knew there was hope for the Hebrew children who had been in slavery for 400 years. And every year that their labor became harder and harder. But they never forgot that they were the children of Abraham. And because God had made a covenant with Abraham, they knew they could trust that God will answer them. Yes, 400 years was a long time. 400 years was a long time where they had been asked to make break without the elements that needed to be used to make break. The slave master said, oh yeah, okay, make sure you build it. How you will build it, we don't care, but make sure it is built. And then when they will come to that place where they even say, you know what, I get it too many in number. And so for this reason, we'll keep the girls alive, but we'll put the boys to death. Jump. And they jumped. But then here came one of the sons that God took from amongst them. You know, the enemy will lay a trap for you. He will lay right here. Because he knows that this is the bad you'll pass every day to go to work. He knows this is where Mr. Mama will park his car all the time. But he failed to realize the Bible tells us that the eyes that God has, mm. they never slumber nor sleep. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. God, heart beats because God loves you. You are his heart. Yes. I am his heart. Yes. So the enemy will lay a trap for Minister Mama or for any one of God's children here. But because God does not slumber nor does he sleep, and because he is the one who got the, 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 the heart of kings in the palm of his head, yeah. he is the one who knows your uprising and your down sitting. Yeah. He is the one who knows your tomorrow yeah. from your yesterday. Yeah. He is the one who knows what you will do tomorrow and what you will not do tomorrow. He knows that you are even quite loud in the bed that don't belong to you. Yes, he does. Amen. That's who he is. Yes, but he said, but because he bears my name, I will not oh, allow that oh, destruction to befall him. Oh, the enemy is planning evil against my son. But because he bears my name, because he's called by my name, that he has professed to know who I am, that he has professed to know that I am his father, I don't care what happens, nothing will come upon him. And even if he should fall seven times, he will get up again. Because I am his God. God. We are God's children. We only got to reaffirm our commitment to the success of the vision God got for us. Amen? Amen. You struggle. Yes, you've been walking with a vision. You've been walking with a visionary because he has told you what his vision is. And you come to a place like Caleb and Moses came, uh, uh, Joshua came to a place where they walked with Moses all of this time. And Moses told them, God has given me a mandate that we should lead these people into a land flowing with milk and honey. To a land where they were living in houses that they did not build. Where they were drinking from waters that they did not dig up. Where their children were built to live in security. <laughs> 
But then only for Moses to go louder and die. Moses died. I know they thought the vision was over. But God said no. Moses was just one of the instruments that I was using. We are all instruments that God will use Amen. to fulfill Amen. the vision. Amen? Amen. You don't know your part in this vision unless you ask God. Amen? Amen. How can you reaffirm your part? You got to ask God. As you are listening to me, ask yourself, Lord, I am of this house. This is the vision. And that is to win the loss at all costs. Amen. 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 To win the loss at all costs. What well, brother Dama is speaking to me. I must win, brother Dama, at all costs. Amen. I win and knock at his door. He refused to open the door. I must win, brother Dama, at all costs. Amen. You know, one thing I like about American uh, uh, um, military, especially after I watched Saving Private Ryan. Who here now watched Saving Private Ryan? I think that one of the best movies ever made. A family. I believe it were four boys, four sons, all in the military. Three died, one remaining. There was a God-fearing man who was sitting at that desk that realized these people have lost three sons to our country. There's one more remaining. We got to do something. And so they reach out to all the people and the powers that be. And they said, where is he located right now? He was in, in the thick of some battle somewhere. And they said, you'll get him. And you'll bring him home. Going for that one soldier cost other men their lives. Amen? Amen. Going for that one soldier, that's how God loved us. Amen. Going for one soldier took the lives of other men. Why? Because God loved you so much, it took his only begotten son. He reaffirmed his commitment to you. We got to reaffirm our commitment to him. Amen. To the vision that God got for us. Amen. That we'll be the one who will rule with Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. But nobody can do it for you. Except you, yourself. Yes. I can talk and I can talk and I can talk, but I cannot do it for you. Amen. You can't do it for me, and I cannot do it for you. You got to be able to turn aside from the way you're walking and ask God and say, Father, where would you have me to go? What would you have me to do? I have sat to idle for too long. I have messed up along the way, and maybe I became offended by somebody. And so I said, I will sit here and don't move anymore. I will sit here and I will just watch. But while you're watching, God is still praying and still reaffirming his commitment to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. While we, 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 we are sitting and, 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 and waiting for somebody else to, to fall, God is still praying for us to come to that place when we wake up from our slumber. When we wake up from our slumber and be able to step up and be counted worthy to take up our assignment to move forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us reaffirm our commitment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, let me just let you know. Reaffirming your commitment does not mean just coming standing up here and standing with your mouth. No. Amen. It means actively be involved in doing what needs to be done. Mm. If it is to sing, give it God your best. Amen. Sing. Even if you're the only one up here. Because as, as, you, as you sing unto God, whether your voice sounds like mine, God will make sure it sounds like the voice of an angel. Amen. 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 If it is to sweep, commit yourself to sweeping. And know say that God sees what you do in secret and he will open and reward you. Amen? Amen. Evidence to be able to bring a cup of water for the man or the woman of God. Make sure Amen. you bring it and do it with sincerity while Amen. praying for God to protect your servant, the servant that he has called to be a shadow, a, a, a protective shield over you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Reaffirming. 
our commitment yes. to the vision. Reaffirming your commitment to a vision. The vision can only live as long as you're willing to fan the flame so that the fire don't die. Amen? Amen. We all got power in our hands. We are all members of one body, but we all got something in us that the other person might not have. But together we can make it come alive. Amen? Amen. They got a medical doctor. But do you know that doctor alone cannot heal a patient? He needs a nurse. He needs the anesthesiologist. Yes. He needs uh, 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 the, the orderly to be there. He needs somebody to be handing him the different instruments that he needs. Do he as a surgeon? He needs the, the technical man to put the, 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 the camera in the person's body to be able to see what he needs to do. But as a team, they are able to save lives. But if that doctor goes in there and says, because I'm the doctor, I don't need anybody. What do you think will happen? Chaos will erupt in our operating room. That's how we are in this body of believers. There's no one person that can do all things in the body of Christ. As a group, we must get up and reaffirm our commitment to the vision. Amen? You may not be of this house. You may be from another house. I hope I'm talking to you through the Holy Spirit. Amen. There may be something that you have become disgruntled about. You know, the other day somebody was talking to me and said, you know, our pastor, well, should I really get on our nerves? When we go to her and talk to her, by the time we say something to her, by the time we turn our back, it's all over the place. So I said, why don't you meet with her and talk to her and let her know? I said, maybe she doesn't understand. Maybe, in fact, maybe she thinks she's helping by asking other people their opinion on it. I said, sometimes that can happen. He said, no, that's not it. I'm no longer going to that church. So I asked the person, I said, what is your part in the church? And she told me the part she plays. So I said, but I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you should stop going because there are people who look up to you in the church. I said, when you stop going, it tends to kill the desire of the people who look up to you. I said, what I would advise you to do is, Go on and sit with the pastor and his wife and tell them how you feel. I said, but make sure you commit yourself to what you've been called to do in the church. I said, then do it as unto the Lord because that's what the word of God tells us to do. Yeah. Whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Because God knew that there will come time when you will become weary in doing it. Mm. And so if you're waiting for men to say, I appreciate you every time. And you don't get the appreciation, it tends to kill your desire. Amen. But if you are doing that, and you say, I am doing it because my father sees what I'm doing in secret, and he will open and reward me when he gets good and ready, you will continue to do what you do. Amen. 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 And so if you are visiting with us, and you are in a place where you kind of wrestling with something, I pray that the Holy Spirit is letting you know. That he got you in that place for a reason. Yes. He got you there to keep the body moving and to, to keep the vision alive. Amen? Amen? He got you there to keep the vision alive. Yes. He had Moses to carry the vision that he had given Abraham. Just because Abraham was given a vision doesn't mean it was going to come through Abraham to the end. Abraham was laid to rest. Moses was well, used to carry the vision forward. Moses did not even know about the vision until he encountered God at Horeb. And when he did, then God told him, this is the vision before you were born. So now take it and go with it. You may feel you're not equipped, but God equipped him. He said, I'm a man who stammers. And God said, yes, I know. You just keep on going. And I will show you what to do. Amen. Amen. Maybe you can stammer. Maybe you shy. But give it to God. And see what God will do. With the reaffirmation. I used to do it Lord, but I messed up. 
And I don't know how to go back to those people. Come and let God be able to reaffirm you and see if He will not be able to carry you where you need to go. Amen. 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 You have you 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 you've come too far. The fire that was burning in some of us when we were in the refugee camps. The, the, the position we had, fasting and praying, interceding day and night. Some of us can't even fast anymore. When Bishop goes for a fast, we can ask him, are we allowed to eat rice? Also, he said, no, eating rice. Okay, can we eat bread? But back then, when they said fast and pray, you knew right away it was dry fast, seven days. No question asked. Because why? There was a situation that hit. Let us go back and reaffirm our commitment. Whether it is our spiritual walk, let us reaffirm our commitment. Whether it is in our private lives, to our partners, to our relationship with each other, let us reaffirm our commitment. I hurt you, but I'm willing to reaffirm my commitment to the success of our friendship. What is it that I need to do? What is it that we need to ask the Holy Spirit to do so that we can be able to become even stronger than ever before Amen. in order to come out successful? We failed last time. Yes, we did. But failure does not mean finality. It's just another opportunity to reaffirm your commitment. Amen? Amen? If you're sitting here today and there are situations that you are struggling with, you may not know how to face it. You don't even know how to talk about it. I'm here to let you know that God has made it possible. God has made it possible for us to be able to, to talk about it and to be able to come to that place where we can say, Yes, Lord, I see clearly that I need to come back home to you in order for you to use me. In order for you to use me in this house. In order for you to rebuild my, 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 my friendship with people who I've, I've since walked away from. To rebuild foundations that I thought could not be rebuilt any longer. I thought everything was lost. But you show me that no, it's not lost. You just got another opportunity to be able to show the enemy that you are supreme in what you do for your children who are called by your name. Amen? Amen. Because we are called by his name. He never wavers in his commitment to us. It is us who are waver when we don't get what we want or we think we know what we want and he's not falling in the line with our plans. Then we turn away. Amen? Amen. Let us reaffirm our commitment. God has always, through our scriptures, reaffirmed his commitment to the people who are called by his name. He said, they are my chosen people. They are my chosen people. If you read the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, from verse 1 all the way down to 6, you will see where he tells you that you were predestinated before the foundation of the world was laid. God chose you in the beloved, in Christ. We are Christ's inheritance. We are chosen by him. We are not a mistake. So his commitment to us is not a mistake. It's not a byproduct of, oh, I put this plan in motion and it did not work. And so I'm just going to do this. No. He predestinated us. Amen. Amen. You were chosen. You were chosen the moment God said, let us. In the book of Genesis chapter 1. After he had created everything. He said let us make man in our image and likeness. So you are not a byproduct. You were chosen. You were chosen. God is committed to our success. Minister Hunter, I'm struggling financially. 
God is committed to your success. Yeah. Minister Hunter, I don't know what to do. When I turn around, it seems bleak. When I pick up the phone, I can't get no answer that satisfies my need. God is committed to your success. Amen. Minister Hunter, I'm struggling in ministry. God is committed to your success. Amen. The enemy will bombard your mind. God is committed to your success. All we got to do is to reaffirm our commitment to God. Amen. For the plans that God got for us. Amen. That God got for us in our ministry. Your ministry may not be as large as Bishop Larkner. It may just be one thing. But God is committed Amen. to the success. Your ministry may be to your spouse. Your children. To make sure your children succeed where you did not succeed. Education wise. God is committed to your success. Amen. 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 If you hear this hour, I didn't plan to preach law, but I pray that the Holy Spirit provoked you. Amen. You used to sing once, once before, before the war came, and then during the war, you used to sing, you used to, to, to be the first one in the church, to come and open the doors, to, to pray, to lead the prayer. Pray for God's children, but since you stop. I pray something awakened in you. Amen. 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 Maybe you used to be the one 24 7 intercession on behalf of God's children, but you become disgruntled. And so you stop. We are from your commitment. Amen. You used to be the one who used to calm the storms when it was raging. And people would depend on you when they would call you and say, There's a situation that's rising up. And I don't know how to deal with it. Reaffirm your commitment. Amen. You used to be the one that would say, let us gather and let us pray. But you stopped. Reaffirm your commitment. Amen. You used to be the one who used to make sure the men or the woman of God had what they needed. With nobody knowing what you were doing. But you sense that why? Because you begin this grumble about something. Reaffirm your commitment. You used to be the one who used to gather the teenagers together and say, I will guide them because I got a gift to be able to talk to them and let them open up to me so I can be able to help them. But you stop. Reaffirm your commitment. You used to be the one who used to walk around the church and look and see what needed to be done. But except only now you come. Reaffirm your commitment. Reaffirm your commitment to the success of the work God told you to do when there was nobody but you and God. But because you decided to go your own way and so you stopped hearing Him, reaffirm your commitment. If you're here and some way, somehow, you turn from looking at the bush that's burning, but yet 